Hello and welcome to the Women's Show. It's me, Chris Brack, and I'm joined by Philip Smallwood and Neil Atkinson. How are we all doing? Splendidly. Okay. <laughs> good, 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 good. We were going to have Emma, but, you know, BBC takes over, and that's fair enough, because, you know, BBC are a little bit more important than me. Uh, so <laughs> let's talk about WSL, because I think last time we spoke, we were just on the cusp of the season. Let's see how it's all going. And it's been a... You know, we were having a bang, didn't we? I mean, you know, Chelsea at home, 2-1. You can't ask much more, can you, Philippa? You know, we looked at them in the end of the you know, it's a bit of a for us. Um, oh, I, think, I think we've lost you there, Philip. I'll come back to you in a minute. Uh, Neil, so 2 1 against Chelsea, that went well. Unbelievable, to be honest with you. I was I was away for it, and I'm gutted. Um, I'm gutted genuinely that I was I wasn't present because obviously it also being, you know, the first the first game, but the first home game of the season after promote, promotion. But I was I was away on holiday, and this I was basically walking around uh, a conservatory in Chicago, uh, following the game from people's Twitter, yours being one of them, uh, <laughs> and being just sort of taken by it. You know, they go one nil down early, and I, I honestly, I, I walked along next to Samantha and I said, "I'm just worried they could get whacked here," and suddenly it, it's back to one one. And there's obviously, you know, I'm seeing hearing about uh, the Sam Kerr disallowed goal, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Following it from there, and then and then getting back and and, and getting to watch it was. You know, it's such a it's such a stern performance, and I mean that, and you know, as a huge compliment. The the hang on, Chris, and the hang on to the coattails of Chelsea in the first twenty, and then they don't just hang on to the coattails of Chelsea, but they use the coattails of Chelsea to drag them into the muck, and then from there they ensure that they find their way through the game. And it's not a lack of quality through it. It's it's understanding how to use the quality they've got to get territory up the pitch to look after the ball for a period of time. And it's so smart. And listen, I think they caught Chelsea on 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 what becomes a decent day in the end. But put all that to one side. It's 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 such a meaningful result, and it's a result that adds, I think, to to Liverpool's luster over the course of this campaign and to the the luster of the whole season. And you know, you're left in a situation where there's really only one truly disappointing results or performance now uh, over the over the course of the first few games when, as I say, at 1-0 down against Chelsea with that much time on the clock, you began to really fear for them. And instead, they just gave everyone a massive lift. And I, I feel as though that's that's been part of, you know, as I say, one game aside, that's been part of what's allowed them to to, to really turn this season into into a live proposition, despite the fact that there hasn't been a league win since, it's part of what makes you think, yeah. But there's something within these that are act, they're actually winners, and and that helps. That helps a great deal. You know, I feel like they're actually winners, and I think that that they show that against Chelsea because you couldn't get that result in that way on, under those circumstances if you weren't a team of winners, and that's what they are. Yeah, we'll go Philippa back. Yeah, I mean Philippa. We we were there for obviously for the last WSL season and we sort of knew that if you conceded early, that became two, three quite quickly. You know, that was just kind of yeah. where we were. Whereas you would say all the way through the season, I know this is the only one we've had, but barring one game, which we'll come to, um, Liverpool are always keeping themselves in it. And we always said that's that was the key for WSL was keep yourself in it because you never know your luck sometimes. And you know, it was a hard forty five minutes. I mean, they absolutely battle for that 45 minutes. Uh, second half, though, Liverpool went up, went up a level, you know, driven by yeah, the back th- the back three and Kerry Holland and I think Missy Bowe in the middle. Yeah, I think um, that's something that's like kind of like really impressed me is how competitive we've been in, in each of these games. You know, when you come up against these sorts of sides, like your Chelsea's and your Arsenal, you can expect them to, to have plenty of the ball and, you know, they're all those teams are always going to cause you problems. But we've limited them, I would say, more than I probably expected us to. Um, and it's it's meant that we've been able to cause them problems as well. And, I, I, you know, it's not just been a backs against the wall and you're hanging on and, you know, hoping that you're not going to get, you know, smashed. But we've, we've genuinely been competitive and, and you feel like these sides know that, you know, it's not an easy game for them. They've had to fight for the points that they've got on the table. And in those games, I think that is the the most important thing for me. You know, like like Neil just said there, you know, there's there's literally one game that you can single out and say we definitely didn't perform and we definitely didn't compete as we would have wanted to in that game. And there might be other reasoning behind that, but 
in every game apart from that, I mean, I, I went to City at the weekend and, you know, the performance there for me, I, I definitely feel we deserve something from that game. Um, and going into it again was one of those where you think anything at all, you know, is a bonus here. But you come away from it a little bit disappointed that you haven't got anything. But you could see in the players that they honestly believe that, you know, they are competitive and the confidence hasn't dropped. And that was a big concern for me after this run of games is that the confidence would have left them. Yeah, I mean, we saw with the equaliser, uh, I think this is credit to Matt Beard, uh, Neil, is, is, I'll probably say bar the one game which we'll come to, is his subs nearly always make an impact. You know, Meg Campbell comes on, you know, the long throw, causes chaos, wins wins the penalty. Tottenham away, you see Raza Roberts come on, you see Fernie come on. They make an impact. They make Liverpool stronger. So that's the other big credit to the managers. Nearly all his subs, when he brings them on, they do something. They cause some sort of chaos or some sort of disruption to the opposition, which is something we haven't probably last time we have weren't doing enough of. The, the, I think the the impact thing's significant, but I think it's I think within that this is it's the marker point that actually again and let's be clear about this Liverpool of of of, of quite possibly pay, played I think the sides who are likely to finish first to sixth with the exception of Manchester United. And I think, what again, one of the things that I thought we might see over the course of this campaign was an element of, well, sometimes you'll see it from the bench. You'll see a bit of a gulf from the bench. And actually, I think what you're actually seeing from the bench isn't that Liverpool's bench options match that of City and Chelsea, etc. But in the same way that when they use their bench, there isn't a marked drop-off. There isn't one for Liverpool either. Mm-hmm. And what that means, so Liverpool are able to say we've got a we've got a squad of 16, 17 women who are all at this level. And we'll find out what this level is at the end of the campaign. But I've got a, a level of optimism that this level will prove to be seventh, eighth, or ninth. I've got a genuine level of optimism yeah. it'll prove to be seventh, eighth, or ninth. And that within that, in exactly the same way that one of the reasons why, for instance, Chelsea are able to have the success they have, Arsenal are able to have the success they have, that they can set aside out and know, know that if we need to change it from the bench, we're bringing on players of equivalent quality, if not at times actually better or more useful for this game in this scenario. And I think that's where Liverpool will be, that Liverpool will end up feeling as though they've got 16, 17, 18 players who are all more than capable of knocking it round at 7th, 8th, ninth in this division. Now, what you do from there is, you know, obviously it's one very much for next year. It's one very much mm. for another day. But I think that's that's... That's part of what those substitutions have said to me. That, you know, obviously credit to the manager, don't get me wrong, but the footballers themselves have got to be of a level. And I think that you've got to see that. I think you've got to see the fact that that hasn't damaged them, you know, when they've had to turn to a bench. That, if anything, as, as you say, you know, you make the point it's boosted them. And I think that that, that, that therefore allows us to have, have a level of confidence that when these fixtures turn, when they're not just solely playing teams that are going to come first to sixth, <laughs> then I think within that, then you can then you can then end up saying, well, all right, hopefully we'll get to see, you know, hopefully we're praising the manager's substitutions even more because they're not leading to some decent opportunities at the back end of matches, but they're actually meaning Liverpool are winning games that they might have won anyway, 2-1, 3-1 or 4-1. That is possible, I think, at this stage. And, and that is about as much as you could have plausibly hoped for. And I think that that's worth, you know, that's worth bearing in mind through all these conversations. That's about as much as you could have plausibly hoped for. Liverpool have shown that and, and those players have shown that and, and it's a credit to them. Yeah. yeah. I mean, Philip, let's talk about sort of like, you know, there's a few new players in the squad and see some players who haven't played yourself for a while. But quite uh, nearly all of them, I say, don't look out of place. You know, Katie Stengel is, what comes to because of the injuries, is having to lead the line now, you know, because of uh, Leanne Keenan's injury. You know, she is causing Chelsea's, the City's, the Arsenal's problems. That shows the level yeah. of forward we've we've got on our hands here. And Mel Lawley, I think, especially the Tottenham game and the City game, looks brilliant. You know, and is doing what she was doing in the Championship, which is causing teams problems and causing real end product for them. And that's kind of like yeah. you know, these are the things. These are always the questions you have: is how will Katie Stengel settle in WSL? How will our four settle in? the WSL will come to the departments in a bit but both of them have been excellent for us so far this season yeah I mean on on Lawley when when we were in the WSL last time I felt she was um pretty disappointed to be honest because she came obviously like from City and you know it was like the big name almost and it felt like she just completely all her confidence evaporated basically and she got that back a lot last season and you know she was excellent for us last season 
But the last three games in particular, Leicester, she was an absolute menace. Um, and she's basically playing as one of the front two um, at the mm-hmm. moment because we've, we've basically reverted to like a three in midfield. And I think that's really suiting us as well um, with not having Keenan available. Um, and she's absolutely terrorising teams. Um, you know, there was opportunities against City where, you know, you could you could argue maybe the, the end product could have been a little bit better, but they, they know that the defenders know that they're in a game against her. Um, and I think that's something that when when she was in the WSL last time, you felt like she didn't quite have that. She didn't quite have that belief that she could beat those teams, uh, you know, like those defenders and, you know, that she could be as effective for us. Um, and that probably goes back to Matt. You know, he's, he's instilled this confidence in her and said, you know, you're you're our, you know, our player here and, you know, building on from like last season. Um, and, you know, it's been really impressive. Um, Stengel for me um, it's a really difficult job that basically leading the line by yourself um, and not having Kanan available when you know she's she's been the player who you know with the pace and you know that that almost like it gives us all our momentum going forward it's very very difficult then I would say for Stengel to be as effective as what what she was towards the end of last season in in championship but she's she's really impressed me. Um and again at the weekend against against City, she you know, she she's putting defenders under pressure and she steals the ball away from a defender who, let's not forget, won the Euros in the summer. Um, you know, yes. she's she's no mug. Alex Greenwood, you know, she played for us ourselves. We know how good she is. Um, and she steals the ball away from it. And then to be so composed to be able to finish that chance as well. Um I think it shows us everything about her. And, you know, against the sides, like Neil says, that we expect to finish in and around us in that bottom half of the table, I think she's going to cause them a lot more problems than what she has done, the likes of Chelsea, your Arsenal, your, your Man Cities, because they are a level above where we are at the moment. Let's let's be honest about this. Mm. But the teams, you know, who I believe will will be in and around us or finish below us, I think she's going to cause them even more problems. And I... To be honest, I can't wait to see it. I think there's, the, the, in general, about the way in which the side's functioning in comparison, you know, it's worth saying that they've played only sides that will finish in the top six. And at the minute, the non-penalty goal difference, non-penalty, by the way, because they've had a couple of penalties, and by the way, they've had penalties that are penalties because they've been getting the ball in the penalty area. The non-penalty expected goal difference is no is not as bad as Brighton's, Leicester's or Reading's. And mm. Villa's West, Villa's West Ham's and Everton's is only a little bit better. Uh, you know, well, it's, well, one point two to zero point four, so a bit more than significantly better, but uh, than a little bit better, but not 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 stupidly so. My point here is that Liverpool have literally had, with one exception, the hardest games you can possibly have. And yeah. I'd argue that you know, even though United are top at the minute, Spurs and, top, and United for the sides who are going to finish seventh to twelfth, it's much of a muchness. My point here is that Liverpool's, you know, West Ham have had the ability to play up against certain sides at this point of this season that we haven't had the ability to play Reading, the played up against Aston Villa. Uh, you know, they, they they had Everton first week, you know, but they and they've got the results that they've got in there and and you know, fair play to them in a sense. You know, we've still got to go and get those results. But, you know, we're performing in in the way in which we are, you know, a little bit poorer than than, than Aston Villa. But Aston Villa They've played West Ham. They've played Leicester. They've again also had Everton uh, in there as well. They've played these sides though, and this stuff skews the numbers. They have the first weekend victory against Manchester City, the four three. When the game gets all a bit out of control, we, we haven't all got the luxury of one of them. Although we do get the result that we get against Chelsea, so you end up in this sort of situation where you know my point here is that Liverpool's numbers are not as bad as three sides as anyway, and are skewed by the fixture list, the underlying mm, numbers. Yeah. You know, when they get unskewed, when we are sort of halfway through this campaign, I expect Liverpool's underlying numbers to be closer to West Ham's, to Villa's, to Everton's than they are to Brighton's, Leicester's and Reading's. And that is a big deal. And, you know, those metrics do mean something. Those metrics do count. There's, you know, there's the, 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 there's a future in them uh, a lot of the time. And that's, that's where Liverpool are. You know, right now, Liverpool from open play, they're massively underperforming their expected goals. Now, there's a minor chat here about whether or not they've had enough quality chances. And that's something to think mm. about. But they're massively in front of goal. I, I, performing at the minute from open play they've only got one goal and the xg that they should have is 4.5 but again that's 4.5 haven't played tottenham manchester city chelsea arsenal and, Man- and um 
and Everton, having gone through those games, this is the strength within this put these performances, and the, the, the strength is uh, all my stats, by the way, are from Stats Bomb, and the strength in these performances, and that strength's important and it's marked, and you know I think that. Stengel's important to that, and I think she's going to remain important to that because the length of time it looks like Keenan's going to be out for, which is which is a real blow. But across the board, I think that we can, you know, as I say, we can be genuinely buoyed. There's, you know, the the whole thing's not without sort of question and debate. I still think it's, you know, it's 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 a really rather slow back three, uh, and you do have minor concerns about that. It's not, you know, and I, I, this is in the context of that I think that everyone's actually played when I've caught Liverpool, you know, pretty well. Um, I do feel as though that is the case, that people are playing pretty well, but they're playing pretty well in the context of the fact that they can only run as fast as they can run. Any footballer, you cannot make footballers, you know, in week by week, you cannot make footballers markedly quicker. And I think there's been some really good defending from people in key moments, but where it's difficult to sort of, to have the level of pace that you've got as a collective in there, it does sort of make it difficult for you. So that it's, as I say, the point isn't that everything is unbelievably rosy and that all these footballers are, are, are you know, are, are, are playing top six WSL sort of standard stuff. That isn't the point. The point is, from where we were, Philippa, from everything that we talked about before the season began, from the way we even felt before certain games at times this season, we are just simply doing better than we might have thought. And that's credit to everyone involved. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's a, it's a good point you make there. I mean, look, as Neil says, not effort is rose in the guards. So, I mean, are there any sort of, you know, Philippa, we've, we've talked, you know, at games, you know, what sort of things do we feel are, you know, areas to work on or areas we can see the concern? I mean, the two in my head at the moment is probably we we are we do seem to start quite slowly, which is the, to be fair to City was the one game we didn't start slow. But I do feel sometimes these slow starts have made life a little bit more difficult for us. And I still we still you and me still have our debate about the formation we play, which one is the champion one is the championship. You can't knock it, but I do wonder if it's too much work for the, the two in the middle. Yeah, and I think that's probably why Matt has reverted to a three now. Um, they, they did it against Leicester in the cup, and it was to see how it how it worked. And you know, we go on and, and win that game four nil. Um, mm. And then the same thing against City. And what it does is it makes it makes it a little bit easier for those at the back for me, um, because as Neil said there, you know, we haven't got a lot of pace there. But when you've only got two in the midfield, basically it makes it a bit easier to pass through the midfield. Um, so solidifying that up a little bit and making Mel Lawley play a little bit narrower um, has meant that there's a, a, a little bit more solidified. Uh, it's, it's been Solidity. solidified a little bit more in, in the middle of the pitch, basically. And it's it, it seems to be working. Um, I mean, we'll see how he plays it when we play against, you know, the lesser side, should we call them that? Um because then you look at well, it worked for us in the championship, you know, and we, you know, we we walked away with that league. You know, is it something mm. that would then work against the teams that are at the lower end of the the WSL, or is it a case where you need to stick with the three in the middle because of the availability of the players that we've got in the forward positions at the minute? Um, you know, Van der Sanden had a first minutes against City as well, which was pleasing to see. But is she ready yet to step in and and start a game, or is it? going to be a case where she needs to come off the bench and therefore you need to stick with just the two forwards on the pitch um so it's going to be interesting times um i also think there is still that question mark about the defense as neil mentioned about just how how quick they are basically um but i was i've been really pleased with what i've seen over the last couple of games um positionally i don't think you can really question a lot of what's going on. Um, I think Jilly Flaherty against uh, Man City was absolutely brilliant, by the way. And I think that needs highlighting. I know she's had a, a bit of a tough start to her Liverpool career. Um, but I think the last two or three games, she's thought really... She was good against Arsenal. thought she was good against Arsenal. Yeah, she was. Say, she just... was. Yeah. Um, you know, and like Neil says, you know, there's nothing you can do about, you know, how fast you can run. You, can, you literally can't address that anywhere but what you can do is get that understanding with your fellow players a little bit better and I think that's what she's yeah. done I think her positional sense is is brilliant there were several times when Lauren Hemp who I think is one of the best forwards in the whole of the, the WSL um, you know was in the box and she shepherded her, uh, shepherded her 
uh, brilliantly and didn't give her any space at all. And I think it can't be underestimated, you know, that skill, basically. You know, we can talk mm. all day about players who can get back in and, and make a tackle and, you know, use the pace in that sense. But to, to be able to stop a player from from creating something or play their natural game, I think is really uh, special. And, you know, she did that against Man City brilliantly. Um, like I say, it's going to be interesting when we've got a little bit more of the ball and we're playing a little bit further up the pitch against the teams, you know, around from from seventh to twelfth, should we say. You know, it's going to be interesting to see how we handle that because I imagine that those teams will be quite happy for us to have the ball sit off us a little bit, bit and try and hit us on the break. Um, that is a little bit of a question mark for me. But, you know, we've, like Neil says, you know, we've, we've, we're outperforming where, where we thought we would be at this stage against the sides that we've played. And I think, you know, we need to we need to keep hold of those positives um, and see how we go at the weekend against Aston Villa, because that for me is a, going to be a real indicator as to, to where we might finish. I think the, the the formation question and in a sense the the the, the pace on the turn question is 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 a deal around who your opponents are, but also it's a from the midfield point of view, I think it's hard to understate the extent to which the lack of Kerry Holland uh, for a few mm. weeks coming up now couldn't have been more poorly timed. I thought she was genuinely excellent against against Arsenal. Um, I thought she she showed genuinely being able to play in that company uh, in a way that, you know, in the middle of the park there in a game which moved incredibly quickly at times. She was she was right there all the way through. I thought it was it was some performance from her. Um, to have lost her for this forthcoming run, I think it does throw open the question around the formation because I think I think that, you know, Kerry had shown that you could stay competitive in these games against these really good sides with only two in the middle. Whether or not Liverpool will feel the same way without Kerry is, I think, a bit of a, a bit of a question for the manager to to answer. And it's, I think, he will answer it in the way a lot of football managers answer this sort of question with a little bit of a halfway house. In that, I expect it to see periods in games where Liverpool are three four three, and to see periods in games where Liverpool are three five two. And mm. you'll see some games we might start with one and move to the other as it wears on. Others we might start more solid and choose therefore to to add attackers as the game wears on and, and take that and you know and extend our chance. I don't think there's a clean answer because I think that's the extent to which she'll be missed. I thought Matthews and Holland were really good against Arsenal, really, really good at Prenton Park. It was impressive to see the two of them up against what is an excellent side, you know, a side that had that that is currently sort of, you know, effectively looking like one of the best, if not the best, in the world, uh, to be absolutely crystal clear about it. And they kept Liverpool able to be genuinely competitive in phases of play around the pitch. You know, it wasn't the same as Liverpool were not peppering the Arsenal goal or anything like that, but Liverpool were able to ensure the football match mostly happened where they wanted it to on the whole because of the quality of Matthews and, and Holland. And I think that's my... That that is um you know it's a mild concern now it's not one that's anything to do with you know any any decision anyone's made the manager you know recruitment anything like that it is as simple as sometimes one of your most important players gets injured and what are you going to do about it and that's where Liverpool are with these with these easier easier fixtures to come it is a little bit of a blow because I do think it does impinge on his his, tac his tactical flexibility simply to lose the excellence of the player yeah definitely I mean I, for me Kerry Holland's been our player of the season so far. I mean, she, I thought she was yeah. last year. She's absolutely immense. Um, we, as Neil touched on, Philippa, uh, Jazz Matthews, you know, was it three or four games ago, we moved her from centre-back to centre-mid and she's been excellent there. And it also gives yeah. us the benefit of we, we can get Megan Campbell in from the start as well, which, you know, it just gives us another option. So, you know, it shows the flexibility because that's a big thing for the manager to deal with. We have been unfortunate with key injuries almost all in the same position, you know, We've lost, we've lost Leanne Keenan and Van der Sanden, so two of our pace op, big pace options we have for the front three gone until a day. You know, Van der Sanden's only just back, Keenan's next year, and then probably one of our most key midfielders gone again. So, and again, as Neil said, this is against sides who will finish in the top six, and you're not, and you know, it's not like you're playing with a full hand. Ellison never has to adapt to yeah. injuries, but you do want a bit of luck of injuries when you're playing the top six sides, and to again to keep competitive. Without those sort of players, you know, you've got to credit that's the squad we've got, and also how well the manager's doing. Yeah, I, I mean, I think it's more of an issue for us in these games that we want to be winning and picking up points from. 
because I think to be without three critical players um, against those sides hurts us more than it does against your likes of your Arsenal's and your Chelsea's because they would literally be bonuses. So I'm absolutely like like Neil says. I think it's like the worst timing. Um, the only yeah. the only kind of I don't know what you call it, but but basically we've got an international break coming up now, and that is the only kind of like silver lining within it. Um, you know, we've got yeah. cup Hopefully games as well. Games. You know, which she probably wouldn't have played, but she's going to miss at least two league games where we would want her available, and she is going to be critical in those games for me. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see what he does at the weekend. I mean, she missed out against City and we played brilliantly. Um, and, uh, you know, the midfield was functioning really, really well. We had Jazz Matthews, uh, Missy Bokerns and um, Furness ended up starting in the end because Kerry Holland pulled out. Um, and, you know, they were brilliant. My thing is, is that I don't see any of those midfielders having the same sort of drive and engine that Kerry Holland's got. And I think that's that's where we miss out. You know, her, her transition from being able to, to take it from defence into attack, I think is absolutely critical for this side. And I'm not sure we've got anybody who really replaces that. I haven't seen enough of Charlotte Wardlaw. Um in the midfield to base could be able to say if she can perform that kind of role for us. Um so Carla maybe Humphreys. that's an option. Yeah, the other one is Carla Humphrey. She hasn't really got much of a look in yet. And it's she, kind of a player I thought was bought for when we bought her. For was the like, WSL. She, she was bought for the WSL. And I'm a little surprised she yeah. hasn't had more of a look in because I think when she played in the FA Cup against Arsenal, she was excellent. You know, really you know, she's a very technical yeah. player, you know. Really good eye for a pass. Now maybe she's the sort of player we need against the sides that are in around us that because we'll have more of the ball, you know, some of that clever pass. Maybe that's what we need. Yeah, I th- I, th- I actually think she may start at the weekend. Um, but like I say, I, I'm not too sure. I haven't seen enough of her to basically say can she perform a similar role as to what Kerry Holland does for us. Um, mm. And my my one concern again, like as as we spoke about with the defense, is. Carla Humphrey, for me, every time I've watched her play, she she hasn't got that turn of pace. She hasn't got the pace in there. So I'm worried that, you know, we haven't got any pace in the back line and then we wouldn't have any pace in the midfield and, you know, whether or not that's going to hurt us. Um, you know, I don't want to I don't want to get overly negative about it, but I think it needs to be highlighted what a huge miss she's going to be for us. Yeah. Pace, pace is, you know, it's one of the key, like watching Arsenal, just having the, the privilege of watching Arsenal really in certain patches, the the turn of pace that certain players have got in this division is just remarkable. You know, you, we got to see some of it against Chelsea, but Chelsea themselves, you know, found it a little bit difficult when Everton quickened it in the game at Anfield. You know, you got to see, my God, Everton have just quickened it there all of a sudden. And we just couldn't quite find, find out that, that almost... You know, just for sort of find that as a me- as, as a brief metronome because you, whenever the part of the reason why was sometimes when you talk about all football teams, any football team, but that Everton team was a really good example of they were able to quicken it on their terms, and then when they did quicken it on their terms, we just couldn't quite live with it, and that. Everton couldn't play 90 minutes at that speed. They couldn't play 45 at that speed. They probably couldn't play 30 at that speed. But all those players, all of a sudden in concert, going right, we all go here for five minutes. Took the game away from Liverpool that day. I think that Arsenal, you got to see in brief spurts that when they suddenly went, no, we're now playing at this speed. Again, they couldn't keep it up, but they can go to that pitch. And that's that's going to be the Liverpool concern, really, I think, especially without Holland, is, you know, but that's what that's what genuine speed can do to you. It isn't as though you're going to be dealing with wave after wave of these unbelievably speedy attacks for 90 minutes. It just doesn't work like that. But you've got to be able to live with it when it's there, and that that is what sort of what concerns me in this step up. It's the it's the thing I think is most marked about the step up. There's the obvious technical ability. They're obviously technically more gifted players than the players that we were playing against last season. But for me, you know, we for instance sang at different times last season, didn't quite sing the praises of Durham. But one of the things that you'd say about Durham was they had this set of skills that made them difficult opponents to play against. We never called them quick. <laughs> we never called them no. quick. 
And I think everyone we faced last season, we felt we felt we were able to be a little bit quicker than, a little bit fitter than for a variety of reasons, up to and including the levels of of professionalism. And I don't mean that disparagingly, I just mean literally whether or not people were full-time footballers. That's that's long gone now. And that's one of the things that I've taken away from it. Every game uh, that I've seen, either in full or the highlights of across the course of the campaign, is suddenly what do you do when the opposition go to this warp speed that Liverpool just aren't that used to dealing with? And that, that would be the concern. All of that said, you know, listen, it's this is football and the job in the most basic way now is win the homes. You know, until Kerry yeah. gets back, but also just in general, it's win the homes. If Liverpool would win that, you know, looking at the next five league games, if Liverpool can win the home before the before the Christmas the, the sort of the Christmas slash winter break, if Liverpool win the homes and don't lose the aways, then that table looks exceptionally rosy. It just simply has to. Uh, We're basically safe then, aren't we, Neil? Already yeah, and th- before Christmas, mm. and I think that that's um, but what that means though, Philippa, is that we'll then because of the way the fixture list works, you know, we'll then have a slightly ropey run, uh, the other side yeah. because you know, very quickly, then we play Manchester United, Chelsea, Arsenal, Tottenham, and Everton all over again, very quickly in the other run, and there'll be moments of going, Oh, could they be catching us back up? But in the in the realms of the ifs of what would you like, it is as simple as in this little run now, win the homes, don't lose the aways. And then I think from there they would just be they would just be in 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 really really good shape and and needing just a couple more results to fall their way in the second half of the season to to be basically safe and then also ultimately able to enjoy the football and that's why it is a worry not having Kelly uh, Kerry for this little run because I think if you've got Kerry in there as well on top of everyone else then you can you know you can really feel as though firstly the other thing to point out as well you know in terms of how long she's out is. In a very unwomen's football like way, there is frankly a bit of fixture congestion on the horizon the other side of the international yeah. break. With the you know, and they're in good they're in good, good in good shape in the cup. It's worth pointing that out. So, you know, I think you want to see them get out the group if that's at all possible. But if they can, you know, they do play from when they get back, they are playing uh with one break, they're playing every three days. They go on a run of playing of playing three games in a week, having a week off, and then and then playing three games in a week. That is that is a, quite a congested calendar, and so to lose anyone to not be full strength of that period will obviously make it harder. And 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 you just worry that in the middle of the park, Kerry is the one who's able to carry a lot of other people's water. So to not have her in there, I think it, it might just make it a little bit tricky in that run. But hopefully they, they keep it together. Yeah, that, that's the thing. Is cross. I mean, let's sort of. Let's talk about what we, we've mentioned this the one the one game that hasn't gone quite well, so we may as well talk about it. Which unfortunately was in front of the biggest crowd. It was, you know, home game at Anfield as uh, twenty seven thousand, I believe. You know, so big occasion. Just unfortunately for Liverpool, it, it, it felt like it, it raised Everton's level, and partly because they had the, uh, the I can't remember the name the younger number eleven on the wing for Everton loan from City. Jess Park. She was ridiculously brilliant and electrically quick. Um, but again, it was a bit of a slow start. But I mean, even at one nil, Liverpool had the chan- a couple of half chances, which they were unusually not clinical with, I would say. And then se- it, second half, it kind of just got away from Liverpool a little bit. It was a- it's frustrating when it gets a big occasion. I think that I think I've seen the record. I don't think we've actually won a home derby at Anfield yet, which is really un- <laughs> it's really frustrating. But yeah, we need to start that out. <laughs> we need to start that out. Yeah, it's, it's, it's not the dumb yeah, thing yeah. really, is it? Yeah, I, I mean. Let's not forget that, you know, these players, they don't get to play on these stages very often, no. if at all. And, you know, it's very easy for us to go, it's just another game. It's just it's just at Anfield instead of at Prenton Park or, you know, any other ground that they play in. But the magnitude of it, the fact that it's on TV, the fact that, you know, it, it's almost like a statement game. And... You know, we saw last season that these players can handle the pressure. But I, I have to say, having watched all the other games that they've played in before and since then, it seems to me that they, they, they literally froze on the stage, in my opinion. And it was only like the last 20 minutes, I would say, where I felt they got any sort of a foothold in the game and they looked like they could properly cause some problems for Everton. And I think... We, we basically have to just write that game off and not use it as a barometer to, to kind of like judge this team because in the other four games, they've been competitive against everybody. They've not rolled over for anybody. Um, and it felt a little bit in that game like they did roll over a little bit. And I can only 
you know, off, off what we've seen last season and what we've seen also this season, it that is an anomaly for me rather than the norm. Um, it's disappointing because it was at Anfield and it was this big occasion and 27,000 people went to watch and you want those people to stay and to, you know, to want to go and watch, you know, Liverpool mm. every week. And you feel that if they'd have won that game, um, you know, that would be a lot easier to do than than getting beat 3-0. Um, by your closest rival but it's yeah I mean it is what it is we can't do anything about it now can we Um, the only thing we can do is hopefully when the derby gets played at Goodison is to to beat them 3-0 there so let's focus on that (laughs) there is the there is the concept that this is literally the big F they just put in against Chelsea and losing Kerry Holland, the manager himself said he tried something different. You know, we tried Hines as a winger rather than as a fullback, and he and he openly said he goes, it didn't quite work. And he, he you know, fair play to mind went, look, that's not me. That's also protecting his players, but that's just saying it didn't work. You know, I felt sorry for young Missy Bo, you know, because she had to do all the press, local local girl. You know, you'd expect that, and I think she was left a little bit, you know, as we thought with the midfield. So, you know, I think she got probably. A lot, I felt some unfair criticism because I think as a team, it just didn't come off. But unfortunately, because she was the local girl, you know, she obviously she did all the press stuff. I, I think there was a lot of focus on her, which I do feel was a bit unfair, which is why I quite liked the City game, especially when we made it to 5-3-2. She was allowed to be the, the high press and you saw Missy Bow at her best then because that's what causes the goal is they're all, the DM is so scared that Missy Bow's going to be around snapping her ankles, snapping her ankles. And it allows her to do what she's brilliant at, which is going forward, she could pick a pass from anywhere and give, building that confidence back in the game. Because, you know, there's no doubt with Missy Bow, the, uh, the ability's there. And look, she's showing at this level, she's ready for it. It's just, it I th- we have to, like you said, put it down as it was one of those games where it's just unfortunate. You, you kind of wish it was one of those games not against your closest rivals, but we are where we are. So, but. Let's move on to positives because you know we've we've all been dour about that. <laughs> Let's talk about who's, you know who's sort of impressed us. You know who's who's done well for us. Who stood out. You know we've already talked about Stengel. I think Neil, we talked about it at the start of the season. I think everyone's seeing you know the goal is fabulous, and you can see she belongs at this level. And quite frankly, I don't know why other WSL sides didn't go for it when we got her. I mean we did, but she's she was great. I mean when we're two one up against Chelsea, I it's the best time delays I've ever seen. <laughs> uh, I mean, definitely that. Uh, abso- bit, ab- absolutely incredible at that. I, I think ultimately this is, you know, it's such a display of shot stopping over the course of the campaign that, you know, you've you almost been knocked over by it um, at times. You know, there's there's so many, so many goals that should have gone in, you know, and, and that is testament to, let's be clear about this, the, the quality of the opposition to state it again and be really clear to anyone listening who might be, you know, unsure about that sort of thing. You know, Liverpool have played the best, you know, they played five games against five of the best six teams. So, of course, the goalkeeper is going to be at her busiest uh, through that through that period of time. But so many, you know, in terms of, if you just sort of think about some of the shots that, that have that have got past her first and foremost have had to be that excellent to be honest with you in order to get get a chance of getting past her over the course of games and and that is again that's sort of testament to to that quality and then there's you know there's so many phenomenally good saves there's you know there's the one from Ford against Arsenal which is just an absolute belter uh, in there you know you've got uh, the, the, you've got to City. save. City uh, the weekend. City the weekend. You've got you. You know that I think that it. I think uh, it was it, it's catch a snow a snow uh, forever. Yeah. I'm not pronounced the name, but I only read it. You know after the, after the fact. You know that 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 that's a shot <laughs> that almost just sort of comes from nothing. She manages to keep that one out. You know you're just left over and over again, sort of just stunned by the quality of of, of some of these stops. There's the late one from Mead against Arsenal, which to be fair, there's not a lot riding on it because the game's 2-0 at that point. But on the flip side of that is, well, there's not a lot riding on it for Mead either. And she still can't stick the ball in the back of the net uh against yeah. you know against against a player of this against this this quality goalkeeper. There is just such an awful, an awful lot in there. And you know, she's whilst this is this is ongoing, it, it's a massive part of what's going to continually give Liverpool give Liverpool a chance uh, and I think that that you know as I say that 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 says so much about where she is and and and, and the quality of her and also how important she is as an organiser as well yeah I mean she's one of the one of the biggest characters with a, with her mate Fernie who 
Listen, when she comes on for now, she she makes an impact. I mean, I think against Arsenal, she tried to head. She head through someone, which I'm surprised she could have run from, to be <laughs> honest. But for us, she's proven at this level, and that's the type of experience. And I think, although we've talked about some of the concerns about maybe the lack of pace at the back, the flip side is Campbell, uh, Nifahi, and Jill Flaherty have been excellent in most games. And what they are is the very organized, very technical footballers, and on the ball, they really set attacks going. and what I have, what you saw with uh, probably in the Chelsea game, sort of the Tottenham game, is the first half against Tottenham. Liverpool weren't great. Liverpool could have easily been two or three down if it wasn't for that back three. It would just marshal everything, and they make they have the mentality of you may get one, you're not getting two, and we are making sure this stays as it is. And I do think that needs to be, you know, brought up. You know, what we may have concerns about pace because look, that's what football's about these days. Uh, a lot of the time is. You can't buy that level of technical experience. You know, they're brilliant. All three of them, I think, have been excellent. Yeah, I'd agree with that. And, uh, you know, if we're, if we're thinking really negatively and we're going, we're going to end up in a right relegation scrap until the very end, you know, these narrow defeats in these games could be absolutely critical. You know, we, mm. we saw that Tottenham um, beat Reading at the weekend. Or was it, no, Brighton it was, wasn't it? 8 nil. You know, we don't look like that's possible against us. And I think that is massive as well. Um, and like you say, that comes down to how organised they are, you know, their experience. Um, but just the fight in them as well, the passion. And and I think that's something that as, as football fans, you know, we'll always buy into, you know, you can have the most technical, you know, players that you can possibly think of. But if they're only turning up for 10% of the game, you know, you can't really get invested in them. Whereas if you've got a player who's, you know, wears the heart on the sleeve and is doing absolutely everything they possibly can to keep the opposition out of the goal, like Laws does, you know, like Nifahi does, like Jilly Flatty does, like Jazz Matthews did when she was playing at the back and now we've got Meg Campbell in there. You know, it's absolutely huge, that. Um, and and then, you know, you've got your full-backs as well. You know, Emma, Emma Coy Visto um, hasn't really shown us as much of what she can do going forward. But I think she's also been critical in that, you know, she's been very supportive of the, those back three as well, coming back and helping out, you know, as, as that right wing back. And, you know, I think I think it's really important, you know, in those games that they've, that they've been as solid as they have been, because that gives us the basis now to one, keep our confidence, you know, up as well. Um, because my, my biggest fear was that we were, you know, going to be, on minus 10 or whatever for our goal difference come this stage of the season. And instead, you know, we're, we're looking at the table and we're going, actually, we, we've done all right there, you know, against those sides. So it, it can only help us going forward. It says, look, when we're looking at the three points we've got going, probably really should be five. And that's, and you know, in a way, that's great to think that we play most of the sides who finish top six and we're going, probably should have been five, really. You know, if we yeah. look the other way, we, pro we probably should have got some from Tottenham City. That's the positive we've been we're, we're going to is you look at these games now going, but we can we probably can get something out of this. You know we should do. I mean it I also think the, the key part the, the key thing Chris is they're giving themselves the chance of making yeah. it five. It hasn't quite come off. You know let's be honest about this. But Tottenham yeah, City yeah. Have, have their own chances in there. Of course, but, of course. but the key element though is it is that idea, Chris, that they'll they'll be able you know keep those games alive until the last possible minute. Make sure they earn it. Go from there. And if the ball does drop you away, you know this, Liverpool have put themselves in position for both of those games to have possibly ended up with five points. And that's all you can ask at this stage. You mm -hmm. know this is the first time they play teams at this level, and that 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 that's going to be the tough part. And I think that that is a really good fair point to acknowledge that Liverpool could have got five points. And whilst you would be saying, "My God, they pulled that out the fire late on." It would still be five points, and that is that 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 is that, that that you know that is worth thinking about. But the other thing I will point out in a really weird way is you're saying it could be five, but no one's drawn a game in the whole league. Yeah, yeah, it's absolutely it's crazy. crazy. I've never seen the likes. No one's <laughs> people played five or six games. There's not a single draw being had in the whole division. I know it's mental. I might go and put money on it this weekend. All draws, <laughs> all, draw, all, yeah. all, 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 all draws. You'll make a killing. Yeah. So, but let's let's look ahead. So, as Neil says, you know, it's a really congested fixture list now. So we've got Villa at the weekend. Um, then we've got Bright, we've got Brighton, and then we've got Reading midweek, and then we've got Blackburn in the cup. You know, and then 
for December, we've got West Ham, City in the Cup, and we've got Leicester. So the, these are the opportunity. These are the games. If you're the manager, you've earmarked this run as this is your opportunity to try and get more points on the board. Anything before this was probably treated as a little bit as bonus territory, although he would probably outwardly never say that. This is what he looks at. Yeah. So this is an opportunity for us to pick one. It's also an opportunity for players who probably haven't seen as much. Your Carla Humphreys, uh, your Charlotte Wardlaws, these are their opportunities. Raza Roberts, who, in my opinion, hasn't had as many minutes as I would expect, but whenever she's come on, she's been excellent. Leanne Rove hasn't had as many minutes as probably some would expect, but it's been excellent in the cup games. So, we are, and especially if it's a congested fixture list, we are going to need all these players, so it's going to be intriguing. And uh, Arthur Cummins has been really good in the um, Conti Cup games for us. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, it's going to be interesting to see in the cup games what he does now because we kind of put ourselves in a position where it's going to come down to, hopefully, fingers crossed, if we beat Blackburn, to like a shoot-off against Man City as to who's going to go through. Um, mm. But what we have got there as well is there's four games back-to-back -back at home. Um, yeah. And I'm really looking forward to that little run because especially because you've got that Blackburn game in there as well. If we can win three out of those four, because I, I would say still it would be a bonus against City to, you know, to win that cup game. If we can win three of those four, that is a massive, massive boost that going into, into the second half of the season. Um, but I mean, first things first, Villa at the weekend, you know, that is our first indicator, I would say, as to, as to how competitive we're going to be against these sides. Um, you know, and it's it's going to be interesting to see whether or not he sticks with that three in the midfield. Um, I would like him to because, I, for one, I don't think you can start Van der Sanden at this start at, at this stage. You know, she hasn't really had any minutes so far this season. She came on against City and just got a few at the end, but um, it's too much of a risk, I would say, to put her in from the start. And I would rather us keep it steady and safe in there. Um, and then maybe bring her on last 20, 30 minutes and, and see what she can do against a, a tiring defence. Um, it, it, do, it does give us more pace up just the bench because then you can, you've can you also got Yana Daniels, who has been excellent. Yeah. You know, if you play, if you play centre mid, you could play wide. But again, if you're bringing Daniels and Zanson off the bench, you're bringing pace off the bench against tiring legs, which we weren't able to do early in the season because of injuries. And to be fair to Yana Daniels, she, she was starting because we needed... We did a starters for the formation we were playing. So it does give us a different dynamic, I suppose. Yeah, it was interesting actually against City because he brought Jana Daniels on and he actually played her as the um, forward one and brought Stengel mm. deeper, which was really interesting. So, it, you know, it's whether or not he's looking at something there as well because let's all face it, if we get an injury to Stengel, we're struggling for a striker basically. So he might be looking at something there as well as to, you know, whether or not he can play Yana as, as almost like a, a centre forward um, rather than either a wide player or, you know, we, we know ourselves he's played her at Wingat before now. So um, she's a more than capable player. Um, but yeah, I, it, I'm just, I don't know whether or not against Villa he'll see it as more of a, you know, these are the games that he can get points out of. So he'll want to go back to the two in the midfield and leave it a little bit more open. But personally, I would like us to keep it a little bit safer and then maybe change it later on in the game if, you know, if it's still nil-nil or, you know, it's close. Um, but let's see. I, I think I think the Villa thing is it's possible that Villa... You know, looking at the minute, you're still waiting for the league to sort of settle itself down, and we haven't had a year's experience of seeing these sides. And also, there is the there's the chopping and changing. And there's a chance that Villa are going to be able to genuinely compete with Everton for seventh, from what you can mm. sort what you've sort of seen so far. For me, the the strange thing is, you know, after the Villa game, Liverpool have got they've got a couple they've got a couple of those those two aways. Let's be clear about this. Liverpool, I know it was a Conti Cup game, but Liverpool went went to Leicester. Philippa was there and put four past them. Reading just needed two injury time goals to turn Leicester around from a, from a 1 0 win in the game just yeah. gone. Brighton have just shipped eight to Tottenham. I think, you know, I think you can look at that first run of three Villa, Brighton, and Reading and say if Liverpool could find a pathway to seven points in whatever order those points come in then they're in really, really good shape. The key thing is not to lose to these likely to be direct rivals. And I, I genuinely think within that, this side's solid enough 
to be able to keep Brighton and Reading at bay and quite possibly look to, to to be able to nick one or two because you know Reading's only win of the season comes against Leicester. Brighton's only win of the season comes against Reading. You know, these well whereas to be fair to Villa, you know, Villa have at least gone to a couple of places and mm. and, and looked look like they you know they've not been whacked you know to use the the sort of the the, the the again what Tottenham have ended up doing to Brighton that hasn't happened to Villa all the way through this so far you know Villa of Villa's goal difference is only minus one at this stage and they played a couple of the better sides as well so Villa you know have got themselves through this without having been whacked they've they've you know they have they did get beat at home by West Ham, but they they beat City and they beat they beat Leicester in there as well, and everything else has been tight. They went one one against Chelsea, so I think we've got to really respect Villa as as an opponent and really see Villa as you know. Listen, we win absolutely brilliant, and we all get to be delighted with it. And 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 I, I think it does say quite categorically, I'd argue that Liverpool will be in that in that conversation, yeah, the, yeah. the the seventh, eighth, ninth conversation, and not in the tenth, eleventh, twelfth conversation. But I think we need to really find the way through this next little run to ensure that Brighton, Reading and Leicester are in their own thing, nothing to do with us. And we do that by not losing either of the aways, ensuring we beat Leicester later on, and then from there just sort of seeing where we go. But I think there's real potential across the next three for Liverpool to pick up those seven points. But we just need to be aware. We need to show Villa, I think, a lot of respect. And it might suit us to be prepared to sit a little bit deeper for extended periods and almost treat them the way we've been treating these top six sides and see if we can nick one and frustrate because I think that, that 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 could be our way home there. Whereas Brighton and Reading, there's a fighting chance. And, you know, it's not like anyone's going to clip anything I say and put it up on the dressing room wall. But Brighton and Reading, there's a fighting chance we're better than. And yeah. that's what might take a different approach from the manager. There's a fighting chance that we are just simply better than Brighton and Reading. There's a fighting chance we've got more strength and depth than Brighton and Reading. And the point, the reason why that matters is we go to Brighton and then the midweek game is uh, is the one that's up against Reading on the on the, on the twenty fourth away at Reading. So again, two games back to back, a bit of pressure on that. But we might have more strength and depth. We might be better make be, better position to make some changes. So all of that, you know, sort of allowed for. I think the Villa priority has got to be not to have not to have happen what happened when we played Everton. We can't suddenly yeah. just come up against one of the sides that's going to be around us and find ourselves not quite able to to be where we want to be and not to be competing. So I think a massive amount of respect, a lot of looking after the ball for long periods. And the hope would be by the time you get into the games in November, away at Brighton, away at Reading, you've got Van der Sanden full, fully fit, available to contribute, and she could make a massive difference because there's every chance that you know Liverpool's attack that they take to Brighton, they take to Reading, between Lawley, Daniels, Van der Sanden and, and, and Stengel, is better than anything Brighton, Brighton and Reading can live with. And there's a fair chance that that's the case, and that's got to be what we're aiming for. Can't say, can't say much better than that, can you, Philippa? So no. just before we go then, so for those, if you haven't been to a women's game yet, if you're a season ticket holder or a fan card holder, you get it for nothing. And £7, isn't it, for adults, Philippa? And uh, 7 or £7.50, something like that. Yeah, and if you're lucky enough to get a ticket to an away game, uh, Liverpool have been putting free coaches as well, which Philippa has been using as well. So you haven't really got much excuse. And listen, there's going to be no men, there's going to be the men's games finishing soon. So the whole December, if you want to go see some competitive world class football, get yourself down to Prince Park, four back to back home games. What more can you want out of life? But listen, we'll leave you there. So, Neil, Philippa, thank you very much for coming on the show. It's always great to have you guys on. We'll hopefully try and get one in before Christmas when hopefully we'll talk about Liverpool getting loads and loads of wins. And we're all happy. <laughs> all the points. <laughs> All the points, that's it. <laughs> but until then, thanks very much, guys, and I'll speak to you all very, very soon.